We want to open this area all up so that it stares saying, yes, you are welcome here. Come join us at the table of the Lord. We all know what weather's like in the Northwest. It can be sunny as it was a few minutes ago, or it can be rainy. So often our elderly folks or those who are in need of assistance have to wait outside uh, for the dial of lift when it's cold and windy and rainy. We wanna have this enclosed overhang with, with a roof that takes them into the St. Joseph Chapel and into the gathering space so that they feel a sense of, of welcome, a sense of protection, and so that they can wait for the folks who are coming to pick them up. Feeling a sense of welcome, a sense of being at home. Our gathering space, though very important for us, often does not lend, especially to young people, a sense of casualness, a sense of being able to, to open up and feel welcome and important. Our confirmation class for our high school teens, our young moms, our young adults. We want to enclose this to make a more homey, casual place where we can welcome newcomers as well as provide space for those who want to grow in their faith, but also know that sense of warmth and home and casual being together. Have you ever noticed on a busy Sunday morning after your second cup of coffee, there's never enough? Sunday morning, coffee and donuts, a lot of folks having to get things ready. It takes a lot of work. We want to make it as easy as possible and especially hospitable for our funeral luncheons when folks are grieving and need our simple loving assistance to welcome them. Having storage in the right place to assist ministries is very important. We will enclose this area and the area behind the altar for both our liturgical ministries and our music ministries so as to have a materials available and close at hand for the various liturgical celebrations. Our carpet, after 23 years, is very, very tired. Not only do we need to replace it, but we want to do so in a way that will enhance the natural beauty of our baptismal font, which will then lead us to the beauty of the sanctuary area. Imagine a busy Sunday morning in this working sacristy when the altar servers are coming in trying to vest. The extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion are signing in and getting their crosses. The lectors are preparing the books and getting ready to proclaim God's word. And then anybody else coming in with any kind of questions, it's way too small and way too inefficient. There are barriers of many kinds that keep us from feeling a sense of welcome and hospitality and being part of. For the folks in the back by the baptismal font, this wall is a real barrier for them to be able to see, but also it provides a feeling of being unwelcome, of being apart from. What we like to do is remove this wall, replace it with something clear like glass, so that not only can they see more easily, but also when we do baptisms, that the community, as they turn to look toward the font, are able to see as well. Another barrier to hospitality is certainly hearing, and we want to upgrade the entire sound system. It's been repaired twice. We want to include what's called a hearing loop, so that if you have a hearing aid, a digital hearing aid, then the signal would go directly to your hearing aid so that you would hear clearly. We want to make everyone feel a part of the community. An important part of our faith raising campaign is enhancing the sound here at the west side. 
as well as capability for uh, audiovisual and a permanent beautiful crucifix to hang over the altar. Our patron, St. Michael the Archangel, we wish to have a prominent shrine for him. And so we will be placing a shrine up on the front wall close to the altar to help remind us of St. Michael's protection. Sometimes our musicians and our choir members feel as if they've been shoved into the corner and their gifts and their talents aren't able to be expressed. And so we'd like to move the choir back as part of the community into the central nave of the church so that the beauty of their sound and their talents will help all of us to lift our voices to God's praise. Our goal is to remove these walls and this platform as to invite the music ministers and choir to be in the central nave of the church so that their voices and their music will wash over us, inviting us to worship around the table of the Lord at the foot of the cross of Jesus. A hidden gem in our midst. In 2003, when we began perpetual adoration, we moved the tabernacle to what is called the Chapel of Repose. And yet many people do not realize its presence here in our midst. So our desire is to open up the ceiling, to enhance the lighting, to rearrange the pews, so that this beautiful chapel will become welcoming for all and connect us to the action of the Eucharist as we gather around the table of the Lord. There is beauty and simplicity and quality of materials. We'll clear up this back wall, have a beautiful mosaic behind the cross of Christ, which will then focus us onto the altar and the community gathered around the table of the Lord, so that recognizing our prayer in the house of God, the gate to heaven, will be nourished and sent forth, sharing Christ's light to the world. Eucharist does not only define who we are, but fashions us into who we are. Eucharist really begins as we leave home and come into the parking lot. Through the front doors of the church and into the gathering space, greeted and welcomed. Through the doors of the main body of the church. past our baptismal font where we sign ourselves with a sign of our faith. Bringing us into the community of faith gathered around the altar of sacrifice, pointing us to Christ on the cross, who gives himself to us in Holy Eucharist, nourished, and then sends us back out to truly be missionaries' disciples, so that coming to the house of God, the gate to heaven, we go forth to share the light of Christ to our world.